All right, welcome back to Louisiana Wrestling Now, episode two, and what's been an exciting November. And and guys, man, I know for me, the Monday after Thanksgiving as a coach, Coach De Palma, and as a wrestler, Chad Ravenack, welcome guys. Man, what's that Monday after Thanksgiving like as a coach, Ben? The season is now started. Everybody get on the scale, make sure we got our weights down. And, you know, this is kind of when the part of the season starts to really tick up. You know, you start to get – Guy, you know, football teams get knocked out of playoffs, so you get some upper weights back. Bigger tournaments are happening. You're getting into two-day tournaments. Having some guys, first-year servers, are having to make weight two days in a row for the first time. So, you know, it really feels like the that preseason, that early season stuff is over, and you're moving in now to where you're putting your head down and getting ready for the long haul. Yeah, and Chad is a wrestler, man. What's it like keeping that weight down over Thanksgiving and then having that harsh reality hit on Monday when you step on that scale? Well, you know, I, what I really like is people are starting to get acclimated to their weight at this point in time. Uh, you know, that month of October, you're really coming down, coming through Thanksgiving. It honestly, wasn't too challenging, in my opinion. You know, you knew what you had to do going into that. Uh, but through the month of November, weights are coming down and you're really coming into season in December. All right. Well, I guess I'm old school because the Monday after Thanksgiving, my senior year, I was in the 105 pound weight class. I think I stepped on at 126 with a mat with a tournament that weekend. So I came before that discipline kicked in, and these very disciplined guys like Chad Ravenack really got things going in November. But man, you know, it's been an exciting first three weeks of the season. You know, we're going to talk about that later in the show. Right now, there's a buzz around the state, and it's. I thought it was about our top ten that we're going to release in a very short time. But I think the big buzz in the Louisiana wrestling community is what we saw last night in the Iowa-Iowa State dual meet. We're going to talk about that later in the show, but quick comments from you guys. One or two words on Evan Frost's performance last night. Ben? Awesome. Awesome. Ice. Nerves of steel. And I'm going to finish that with an absolute hammer because he got the takedown and he wasn't content. Kid got himself a tilt. Man, just incredible. And I think every coach, every wrestler, every fan in Louisiana felt that last night. I'll admit it. I was jumping up and down, and I think, on top of my coffee table. I was happy for two things. I didn't have to watch Derek Carr and the Saints, and I was able to watch Aaron <laughs> Frost and a great dual meet on ESPN. So we're going to kick it now to a commercial break. We will be back with the long-awaited top 10 wrestlers pound for pound in Louisiana right after this commercial break. When you have suffered a personal injury or endured the wrongful death of a loved one, your focus should be on healing. But with medical bills piling up and insurance companies offering less than you expected, you're bound to feel overwhelmed. Since 1994, the Law Office of Stephen J. Rando LLC has used experience to work towards helping his clients obtain the full and fair compensation they deserve so that they can move forward. Contact him for a free consultation. Located at 3530 Canal Street in New Orleans on the historic streetcar line, call 504-486-7122 to schedule an appointment. Recognizing that each patient's goal is unique, plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Henneman offers creative solutions for his patients, utilizing the latest technology and procedures to achieve desired results. When you arrive at our Baton Rouge office for your consultation, you will find impeccable service in a comfortable, relaxed environment. Improving patient appearance, self-image, and confidence are our measures of success and satisfaction, and your privacy and confidentiality are always held in the highest regard. Take your training to a whole new level at Hotworks, the world's first 24-hour infrared fitness studio. Get 24-7 access to virtually instructed infrared sauna workouts with 3D training combining heat, infrared energy, and exercise, giving you increased calorie burn, muscle recovery, detoxification, and more. Choose up to 11 different workouts like hot yoga, hot Pilates, and hot cycle. Get more workout in less time. Hotworks, come earn the burn today.
Welcome back to Louisiana Wrestling Now. And I know for us, it's been a much anticipated top 10 in the state, pound for pound wrestlers, with plenty of wrestlers knocking on the door. But we've got to start somewhere. Any complaints, you'll email directly to Chad Rabinak. We'll get that email out, address out later. But for right now, man, let's kick it off with our top 10. Here we go, Chad. Who's in your top 10 spot? Christian Scott, Catholic sophomore coming in off, uh, you know, he, w- he came into a state tournament wrestling the guy that was arguably the best in the tournament. And uh, he came in as a freshman and went went to go, went directly at the line. And I respect the kid. He, he's wrestling in the summers and he comes from a lineage of wrestling. And uh, I think the, you know, the, the sky is the limit for that, for that young gentleman. Ben? Yeah, I mean, I've talked about him a lot. He's one of our guys. I mean, he's a boa constrictor, so when you look at him, he doesn't look super explosive. He might him look super athletic. When he grabs you and he gets a hold of something, you're not getting it back. And he's uh, he's in love with wrestling. He wrestles year-round. It's all he does. I mean, he wrestles every single day. He goes out of town for a tournament. He's back up here Sunday working out. Sometimes his dad's in there rolling around with him. Um, so, you know, young guy, he's still learning a little bit. He dropped the Magic Gulf Coast was up in the semifinals, was in total control of the match, tried to throw a Hail Mary, uh, Hail Mary cradle just because he wants to pin everybody and end up slipping off and losing the match. But I think, you know, as a sophomore, it's just things you learn on how to win matches at the end. Yeah, and and Ben Ben has Christian a little bit higher, but you're number 10, Ben. Rory Horvath, man. I mean, the, the, the big Horvath family from Brother Martin. He's just a super tough kid. You know, he was a state runner-up last year at 160 uh, for the Crusaders. And this year, so far, he's off to a good start. He's only got one loss, right? He won He won the Cinco Ranch Tournament. He got second place in Gulf Coast, and he wrestled an absolute hammer, state champ from Alabama, 6-3 to three match, really close match. And he's just a grinder. I mean, he's not a guy that's going to do anything flashy, but he's going to be in every single match. It doesn't matter how good his opponent is, he's going to keep that score close, grind out close matches at the end. I expect to see him, right, on Saturday night, uh, Saturday night in Bossier at the state championships. Yeah, man, look, Rory's a great talent. I've got him right outside of my top 10, but he's right there. He can jump in during the season. Let's go with number nine. Ben, who do you have at number nine? Braden Simino, the sophomore from Turling. So he doesn't have any matches yet. He's a football guy. Turling's is still in the semifinals. Uh, But, man, he had an incredible showing last year as a freshman. He finished third in Classic behind uh, two guys that were just absolute hammers from St. Paul's in Texas. Goes on and wins the Division II state title um, at 170 pounds. Had a really great offseason. He was in the blood round of Virginia Tech, I mean, uh, Virginia Beach, right? One match away from All American. And from what I hear from the Lafayette guys, he's actually going down in weight classes this year. He'll be at 165. So I just think he's going to be one of those guys, again, that we're going to see Saturday night in Mosier. Yeah, he's one of those kids who, the, the rare freshman who steps in at the upper weights and has a great season. He's another guy I've got right outside the top 10. And he was simply a victim of playing football right now. And some other guys got off to some impressive starts. As you can see, both Chad and I have Conlon Inc. at number nine. Chad, comment on Conlon? In true Robbie fashion, he was looking at my paper. (laughs) No, Conlon Inc.'s a great guy. Uh, Matt Panera is doing a phenomenal job over in the North Shore. Uh, Conlon H is very aggressive. I love, I love the aggressiveness that he takes to the mat. Uh, always working to finish his doubles. I think that that not doubles his uh, attacks. I think that that's one of his strongest parts. Uh, you know, I mean, the kid made it to the finals in his third year of wrestling. I mean, that's pretty unheard of. And then the next year, beat multiple state finalists in order to get back to there. Uh, you know, I think he's just a stud, and, and I'm really interested to see what he does this year. Yeah, look, he's a member of the Dupree family. So you d- I definitely had to put him in just based on the fact that there's so many Duprees. I wouldn't be able to fight them all off if they all attacked at once with singles and double legs. But, no, he definitely deserves to be in. He's a two-time state runner-up. He's a senior this year. He has a career record of 84 and 16. Number eight, Chad, why don't you take it? Who do you have at number eight? Jacob Kershaw, uh, North Soto. Whenever I called uh, Dustin Burton, uh, I said, you know, I was looking at my top 10. And I said, we have to have one from North DeSoto. Uh, it was between Compton and Kershaw. And uh, 
you know, it was really a toss up between the two, but Dustin Burton, my teammate put it best. He said, he is the epitome of what I want a North DeSoto wrestler to be. He's coming in, he's heavy hands. Uh, and when you step on the mat with him, you're going to remember when you're walking off, no matter whether it's a win or a loss. Yeah, and Ben has Christian Scott at number eight, which we already commented on Christian. For me, I, I, I initially had Jackson Calderera on the outside looking in, but man, I spent, you know, the last four weeks looking at these results and the kid's a pinning machine. He pinned his way through the Gulf Coast Clash. Uh, one of my mindset kids wrestles for Woodward Academy. Uh, second round, I warned him. I said, you got a tough match, and the match ended at about a minute and 50 seconds. So I guess I didn't do my job as his mindset coach. But, man, Jackson was really impressive at the Gulf Coast Clash. Last year, he had three wins over the state champion from Catholic High, and the state champion from Catholic High was able to reverse that in the state finals. But, man, Jackson's been impressive. 67 and 21 for a career. He's a senior, and he comes in at my number eight. Ben, who do you have at number seven? All right, guys, at number seven, we've got Colin Ink. We've already talked about him. I love this kid. I, I really like the way he wrestles. Um, he, you know, I got Bodie Harrison here, too. I'm going to say the same thing about him. Colin Ink and Bodie are the two guys that I feel like use their body type, right, and how they wrestle to their advantage, right? They're long. They tie you up, right? And so they're hard to get away from. They, they shoot low. They like low singles. They use that length. Um, and like like Chad said, he's been there twice, right? He's been in the last match of the season twice. And, you, you know, as a senior man, you know, you've been there once and you, you didn't get it, you know, it's that extra drive in the offseason. He's, he's 6-0 and right now. They've only wrestled duels at wrestling tournament yet over at St. Paul. So just really excited to see what he's going to do this season. Yeah, and, and Chad, Caden Trish. Caden Trish, uh, state finalist as a freshman, state champ as a sophomore. Uh, you know, he – Obviously, I'm a little bit more familiar with him, uh, but everything that the coaches are telling me is the kid is in the gym. They have to tell him to leave the gym. Uh, he just can't get enough of it. You know, he he's in Fargo. He's wrestling Freesaw. He's wrestling Greco. He's going to the duels. Uh, you know, we really have, you know, I have high expectations for that young man, and I'm really excited to see what he's able to do this year. Yeah, man, it looked the same with my guy at number seven, Bodie Harris. Um, you know, you, you say Harris, and that name is synonymous with Jesuit wrestling with his dad, Spencer. And, man, Bodie last year set the tone, I think, midway through the season. Really saw him kick it up at the Louisiana Classic. And then the huge win in the state finals when they were in a tough team race with Catholic. That's a lot of pressure for a sophomore at the time to go out there with. He's thrown together a 74-11 and 11 record. And, look, this is a kid who really didn't take wrestling serious until he got to Jesuit in the eighth grade. Before that, his dad would tell me he was more of a baseball player. Uh, I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, I dropped him a couple of spots just after some the tough loss at the Gulf Coast Clash, but uh, definitely firmly in that top 10. Chad, why don't you give us your number six? Uh, we have Bodie Harris at number six. Long, wiry guy, uh, you know, same as Conlon Inc., it's probably not the most uh, intimidating guy when you step across from him on the mat, but when he puts his hands on you, he start he knows how to use his body, and uh, he's able to create a lot of pressure. And I think I think he's going to be a problem for the next couple of years. Ben, all right. So disclaimer: I'm the only one here that wasn't allowed to edit their top ten in the last two weeks. So this was <laughs> two weeks ago before the Gulf Coast Classic. No offense to Tyson. I think he's an absolute stud. No, I, I love Tyson Roach. I've watched him since he was in kids' club. Um, I mean, look, he he was about 94 pounds his freshman year wrestling 106 and giving people hell. And when his body caught up with his mentality, man, he's just been killing everybody ever since. Um, you know, last year watching him wrestle, I thought there were times where he was unbeatable, and then there was times where he would make big mistakes, right, throw himself to his back or whatever. He seems to have rectified that in the offseason. And, you know, if, if he can stay consistent and stay off of his back, I don't see anybody who beats him. Um, you know, so, look, the next the next top ten that will come out, he, he's higher after that Gulf Coast finish. Yeah. And, look, I have number six. I have Dalton Compton of North DeSoto. I really base this on the fact that he went to four, four, uh, folk style nationals and the All-American in the freshman and sophomore division. Uh, I really think it's important to get out there and wrestle in these national tournaments. This kid was 47 and 11 last year 
He's a state champion, and he came rolling in. Wasn't a kid that came rolling in his freshman year at 106 to 113. You know, he jumped in there in the middleweights and he battled it out, so I have him at number six. My number five, and I'm going to preface this by saying I can't remember the last time in Louisiana that we had five kids that I can think of my top five. I believe they're all Division I wrestlers. And it's not that six through ten aren't because they probably – We'll get there also. But I think right now, if we're divvying out scholarships, I think these guys are well in play. Um, I have Nicholas DiGirolamo at number five. Nicholas is a three-time state placer, finishing fourth as an eighth grader, third as a freshman, and then winning the state championship last year as a tenth grader. Man, in football this year, probably rolling in at five foot six, 175 pounds, he was the district all all district middle linebacker with 125 tackles which led the state he led holy cross to just a fantastic season they finished up with a playoff loss to Acadiana the other night this kid's a human missile on the football field and i think he is on the wrestling mats too as we've all seen so i expect big things from nicholas this year with a career record of 90 and 21. chad uh, Tyson Roach, uh, you know, like I said, like uh, Ben alluded to, I remember him being a little guy and you know, being a little guy myself. I was like, man, you know, this this little kid's going out there and he's really getting after it. And that little kid has been to a problem, has been very strong on the mat. And now I think he's starting to get this old man strength, having what just transpired over this past weekend, uh, which I think we'll get into in a little bit. But Tyson Roach, I'd love to see him go to the next level. I think the potential is there uh, at any division, no matter where it goes. Well, he's uh, already I committed. Just... Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's right. He's, he's going to Little Rock. He's, he's going to Little Rock. He's going to wrestle he for Neil. He signed with Arkansas Little Rock. Yeah, he's going to Little Rock. Yeah, he's going to see he's my going. buddy Neil. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I think he's going to do a great job. I think uh, they got Josh Sarpy up there, and then uh, Neil Arisman is one of my best friends. I stood in, stood in his wedding and uh, we were teammates at Oklahoma state. And I know he's going to unleash, uh, unlock a lot of potential out of him, um, at that next level. And Ben. Yeah. Bodie Harris, get, he dropped that tough match to Tyson, uh, last week at Gulf coast. But kind of like I said earlier, I just think he's one of those guys that understands who he is. He's long, right. And he uses that length to his advantage, low singles, Ties you up on top. I mean, he's a frustrating guy to wrestle. I mean, we had to wrestle him a lot last year um, at, at, with Grant Grzafi. And it's just it's just, it's frustrating because you can't get away from him. And when you finally do and you think you got some some, some to work on top, he'll get to your ankle and tie you up again. So he's just a real smart wrestler and just knows, knows who he is on the mat. Yeah. Chad, who's your number four? Uh, number four, we have Nick D. Geralna. Nick D. is just an absolute hammer. Um, you know, I, I, while he's out there doing incredible things on the field, I wish we had some more time on the mat, uh, with him. but he certainly can go to the next level in any direction in which obviously I'd love to see him in a singlet over pads. Uh, but you know, nothing else needs to be said about Nick D everyone knows Nick D and, uh, he's just an absolute powerhouse that you don't want to, you don't want to toe up against. Yeah. Yeah. He's my, he's probably my favorite wrestler to watch. You know, when, whenever we're in a tournament or whatever and I'm there and he's wrestling, when he gets on the mat, I stop what I'm doing. I go watch him. He is the most physical wrestler in the state of Louisiana. I mean, the way he hand fights, he finishes every move at 110%. I mean, he, he will push you through the mat on his finishes. And, it, you know, and we talked about it last podcast that it's very much like what we see like in Pennsylvania wrestling right, or Iowa wrestling where it's just – you're so physical that guys back down. And so I'm just really looking forward to watching him again this year. Yeah. He's like my, my old saying, he has two speeds, stop and kill. <laughs> and, and he wrestles like that every time. My number three is Richie Clemente of brother Martin, man. What can you say about Richie? Absolutely dominant in Louisiana. I think one, two, and three for me are really interchangeable. Um, and Tyson Roach, like you guys said, he really, man, you could see he's got that man strength now. He's been dominant this year. So that's why I have Tyson at number four. But number three, Richie Clemente, 100 wins, two losses in Louisiana in, in, in his first two years. Two-time Louisiana state champion. I don't think he'll be challenged in Louisiana. He's an early commit 
to Cal Baptist, a Division I program. And, man, like I said, sky's the limit. Chad? Yeah, he just hadn't had a close match in the state. I mean, last year, I know Jesuit had a plan to try to keep the match as close as possible by kind of stalling out the whole thing, which is not a bad not a bad strategy in a tight dual meet. Uh, but, you know, he hasn't had anybody really in the state challenge him in two years. Um, and so, like you said, the sky's the limit for the guy. And, you know, just interested to see uh, how, he, how he progresses this year. I mean, how do you get better? How do you better what you've had the last two years? So we, we'll see what that goes. Alex okay. Rosas, just absolute hammer on top, is turning everyone. Um, I haven't spent too much time with him, but everyone that I've asked has just said he's an absolute student of the game. He's constantly watching film on other wrestlers. He's constantly watching film on his competitors, putting game plans together. Just loves the big lights. And uh, he's going to turn you. So. <laughs> All right. My number two is the guy you just spoke about. And I remember last year when I saw Alex Rosas for the first time, I told Paul Klein, I said, dude, he's better than you were as a freshman. And Paul gave me that little grin. And then Paul watched him wrestle and said, coach, he's better than me when I was a freshman. And um, I expect him to finish up in that category that Richie's going to finish in that our number one's going to finish in, and then a maybe another five to ten guys in Louisiana. But the thing about Alex, man, 55-0 and 0 last year as a freshman, and he traveled to the Allen Outlaw Tournament and went undefeated there. It seems like he texts everyone. He either picked 17-2 to 2 or 15-0. to nothing. Um, He's just been unstoppable this year, um, and he's done it on a national level, too. Not only is he a state champion, he's the 2022 Folk Style National 16U champion, the 2023 16U champion, and he went to Virginia Beach and placed fifth. And I put a whole lot of stock, in fact, the most in that Virginia Beach tournament. That's why I have him at number two. Chad? So, Richie Clemente, everyone knows him. I think you guys went into him very much. So, I'm going to take this time to – Look at the lineage of all of the wrestlers that we see here. Horvath, Christian Scott, Conlon Inc., Semino, Trish, Bodie Harris, I mean, Clemente. It's it's outstanding to see that the generations are passing down in the wrestling and you're seeing the success coming through. Uh, so nothing to take away from Richie, but, you know, he's the man. Uh, I love to see it. I love to see him in a Cal Baptist uniform. And uh, excited to see what he does outside of Louisiana this year. Yeah, man. And Ben, your comments on Alex. Yeah, I was just going to say, we had talked in the prep show, like the one thing you always wonder about uh, a freshman that does really well at 106 is how do they handle moving up in weight classes? Because 106 tends to be, you know, freshman, sophomore weight class. Hadn't seemed to be much of a problem in the offseason and early this year. He's handling everybody at 120. All right. Well, that leaves us with just our number one pick to go, and it was unanimous. Our number one pick from Jesuit senior, Spencer Lugnosa. Guys, give me your comments on Spencer before we bring him on. Immovable. I mean, he's unbelievable, unbelievably talented. Um, you know, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is we didn't get to watch him a lot last year. He was getting his weight down for football up until the very end of the season. So we only got a few matches with him. He's, you know, he's, he's already in. He's got his weight down. He's trimmer. I know Coach Paul Hattie and Aurelian over there have been working him really hard in the offseason. He did incredible in the uh, in the spring and the summer tournaments. So I'm just really excited to kind of watch him compete uh, this year. Chad? So to reiterate your point, Ben, uh, you know, we didn't get to see him a lot this year. And unfortunately, when we do get to see him, it's still not a lot. We're, we're, only, we're only talking minutes at a time. Uh, Big Spence is just an absolute powerhouse. I, I haven't seen too many individuals that size be able to move the hips, being able to throw it. He is a very, very special wrestler. Uh, I think Giano is only going to accentuate that. His ability to tap into individuals, draw out the best from them. And then once he gets on a plane and goes up to Annapolis, he has one of the best, one of my favorite wrestlers ever. Kerry Colot. And uh, so I think he's just, I think we're going to hear his name for a very long, for a very long time. 
All right, and right after this commercial break, we're going to be back with two-time state champion and Naval Academy signee, Spencer Legnosi. When you have suffered a personal injury or endured the wrongful death of a loved one, your focus should be on healing. But with medical bills piling up and insurance companies offering less than you expected, you're bound to feel overwhelmed. Since 1994, the Law Office of Stephen J. Rando LLC has used experience to work towards helping his clients obtain the full and fair compensation they deserve so that they can move forward. Contact him for a free consultation. Located at 3530 Canal Street in New Orleans on the historic streetcar line, call 504-486-7122 to schedule an appointment. Recognizing that each patient's goal is unique, plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Henneman offers creative solutions for his patients, utilizing the latest technology and procedures to achieve desired results. When you arrive at our Baton Rouge office for your consultation, you will find impeccable service in a comfortable, relaxed environment. Improving patient appearance, self-image, and confidence are our measures of success and satisfaction, and your privacy and confidentiality are always held in the highest regard. Take your training to a whole new level at Hotworks, the world's first 24-hour infrared fitness studio. Get 24-7 access to virtually instructed infrared sauna workouts with 3D training combining heat, infrared energy, and exercise, giving you increased calorie burn, muscle recovery, detoxification, and more. Choose up to 11 different workouts like hot yoga, hot Pilates, and hot cycle. Get more workout in less time. Hotworks, come earn the burn today. Welcome back to Louisiana Wrestling Now. We are joined by our unanimous, pound for pound, best wrestler in Louisiana. There he is, smiling. What's going on, Spencer? Nothing much, nothing much. All right, bud. So, man, for you, what's it like to wrestle in November? It's it's really it's awesome. You know, I've never really been able to do that because I've always been playing football, so being able to wrestle before before November is just great, you know, and getting good matches in in October and September and stuff. It's been a good time. We, you remember when we spoke at the state tournament last year? Oh, you yeah. walked up and I said, I'm not happy with you. And you looked at me like, well, what's this guy <laughs> talking about? And I said, man, I really missed watching you wrestle. And, hey, you know, you were dedicated to sport athlete. 39-2 um, and two career record up to this point, which some people would say, well, it's not a whole lot of matches, but you've been absolutely dominant. So for you, man, what, what does it mean to be able to go through a full senior season with your teammates? I mean, it's great. You know, we have the opportunity to run it back as well, get that second state championship as a team and to be there with them throughout the whole process and not just jumping on board at the end just really means a lot. And I'm, I'm excited for the end of the season. Yeah, so, so tell us, you know, everyone out there, um, a guy like you, when, what age did you start wrestling? I started wrestling when I was mm, either five or six. Right now, in that, right in that I area. remember you as a, a in the kids' tournament. <laughs> I do. And you were one of those guys, you caught on pretty quick, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so about like right away, when did you know you're like, hey, man, I'm really good at this? I think kind of the turning moment for me was like when I was little – there was no kids who were my age and my weight. So I had, I'd always have to wrestle up in age division. Like I was an intermediate wrestling novice. And when, when I was able to start, you know, to beat those kids, that's when I kind of realized, okay, you know, this is something we can do. The light went off. That's for yeah. sure. When did you start going out of state to wrestle Spencer? Oh, geez. Um, I remember I was eight. We went up to Cedar Falls. I thought it was either eight or nine. We went up to Cedar Falls nationals. I was in a three-man round robin, and I wound up winning it. That was that was a really cool experience winning uh, winning when I was real little like that. So th that was the first out of state one we went to. It was in Iowa. Yeah, let's talk about some of these national tournaments, man. Uh, I'm just gonna read off 
you know, a two-time state champ, a one-time state runner-up, 2021 folk style runner-up, 2021 Fargo freestyle third and Greco runner-up, 2021 NHSCA runner-up, 2022 Southmore Virginia Beach NHSCA champion, and man, this year Super 32 third place. And Spencer, you and I talked about it yesterday. That semifinal match in the Super 32s, man, you you had it, and I know you you feel like you had it also. Kind of, what was the turning point in that match? Gosh, you know, you know, um, he's a very athletic guy. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to get good matches like that. I have to go, you know, I got to go out of state to get really good comp like that. And so he was able to get catch me in the flurry at the end of the match with a nice little shot. But, um, yeah, I really wish he could get that semifinal match back. Yeah, and look, man, I, I watched every match of that weight class. In my opinion, you were the best heavyweight in that weight class. Sometimes it goes like that, right? And we talked about it earlier in the show. If you're not going out trying to find someone better, then you're just not going to get better. Exactly. So the, the losses that you've taken, like – you and I talked about this also. You wrestled Aiden Nateo at the Elite Duel. For our audience out there who doesn't realize who Aiden Nateo is, he's a multiple-time champion, state champion. He's a triple crown winner. He's a Greco third in the world U-20 wrestler. And you wrestled him to an 11-7 match. Man, what do you learn from something like that, Spencer? And what do you take away from that? Well, you really, when you wrestle guys like that, you start to learn really the, the tiny details that make the big difference in big matches. So, you know, it'll be instead of um, instead of coming to the body lock like I did in that match, you know, it'd be, it'd be getting to that leg and just the tiny stuff that really makes the biggest difference. But, um, yeah, that was, another, that was another match where I go in, I get the first takedown, I'm up, I'm feeling good, and I just – I didn't respect his Greco enough and wound up getting – getting hip tossed real quick and they gave him a two swipe and then all of a sudden I'm down five, three and just battling back to try and uh, win. But yeah, but the, those big matches, those, I, those really, uh, that those helped me improve so much. It's, it's unreal. Yeah. Um, and, and one, another thing I asked you on the phone and I said, look, I don't want to give, I don't want you giving away any tips, but dude, how did you, it just seems like you feel it when you hit that lat drop. <laughs> what do you, what are you looking for there? Like, how far could you lat drop Chad across? The <laughs> Where did you go to throw it? Like right away, right? Leg foul. Well, like I, I've foul. been, <laughs> I've been, I've been hitting that same lat drop for ever since I learned how to do it, and that came with a lot of trial and error too. So you know, there'd be sometimes I'd go out there, I'd hit it, and boom, it's done. I'd pin myself. So <laughs> I, I'd, I'd learn. I eventually learned that pinning yourself sucks, and to not do that. And uh, it just got it got really good in my arsenal when I you catch them in the over under. As soon as I feel those hips come in, it's game. So, <laughs> so that, I really. So, yeah. so what poor kid has to wrestle you in the practice room every day? I'm with Jackson. Me and Jackson are getting after it. Jackson's uh, well, getting me better. Thank God, because um, the way Jackson wrestles, his style, it's just completely unorthodox, and that he preps me really well for wrestling those, you know, for those big matches because. Up there, out of state, you'll have guys like I was in on a on a single one time, and this dude tried to funk roll me out of the single. Thank God, I wrestled Jackson every day. I knew what to do, and so I was able to defend it. But yeah, me and Jackson, and I'm telling you get what, that good you work every day. You have definitely helped him also. 100%. Oh, hundred yeah, percent. Sure. You can see the improvement in him for sure. Um, so the Naval Academy, you know, yes, you're not going to college to party. No, no, sir. no, there's no party at the Naval mm -hmm. Academy. So has this been a lifelong dream for you? Well, you know, I always knew I always, you know, I wanted to have a bigger calling to something. I didn't want to, you know, just kind of be like the run of the mill guy. I figured the best place to do that would be at the number one uh, public university in the world. You know, it's a it's a leadership factory. They produce producing the alumni are crazy, you know, left and right. And um, I'm just really, really honored to be able to go there and do the sport I love up there at a place like that. Yeah. Look, and they have, they have a great coaching staff up there too, that I think, I, I really think I haven't tapped into my full potential as a wrestler yet. And so well, once I'm, once I'm up there with those guys, that's when, that's when it's going to get real. Well, that's scary. That is scary. <laughs> so Chad, Chad has a relationship with a couple of your coaches at the Naval Academy. What you got for him, Chad? 
Well, I mean, as much as it is there, how was the recruiting process? You know, my goal every day I wake up, I want to grow the sport. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about that. You recruit highly touted recruit coming out. How did the recruitment process go? And, you know, tell us a little bit about that and why you decided on Navy. I mean, it was it was a really cool experience being able to go through a recruitment process like that. I got to talk to a lot of cool people. But um, – what really kind of would seal the deal for me is when I, I went up there for the visit. I got to see campus. I got to really, I got to talk to Coach Cola. That, that's another crazy thing. Um, just seeing everything up there and feeling that energy and kind of um, seeing what the graduates from that place have done. Just uh, it was a no-brainer for me and my family. And uh, yeah, and then no other, no other school could offer what uh, the Naval Academy is offering me. Ben, so, you have anything for Spencer? Yeah, it's the only thing I wonder. We talk about this on this program all the time because we know that a lot of like high school and younger kids watch this. Um, take us through like your pre match routine, especially when you get in those big national matches. Like, what's your mentality an hour out, 30 minutes out? Like, what are you doing to get prepared to get on the mat? So I get I get to the tournament. I, I want to make sure that I ate breakfast and I had a, a really good warm up, a nice intense warm up. I want to be sweating really hard, like two hours out from my match. So that way I get to the match and, you know, for those big matches, I'm always a little bit nervy, but, you know, I kind of, I use that nervousness to, um, to wrestle. So um, I'll go out there. It'll be like when I'm in the hole, that's when I put my straps up, you know, when I'm on deck, it's when I get the headgear on and then I'm always just bouncing and moving, staying warm and getting ready to kick some butt. That's a, uh, that's the pre -war that's the warm up routine for me. So I gotta ask my last question is when was the last time you wrestled Coach Hattie? And what was the today? Story? Today. Caught him slipping today. Caught what him with a nice little <laughs> in my back pocket for when I see him. Caught him with a nice little um, um sweep. Couldn't see it coming. Nice. <laughs> but, hey, last okay. question for you, Spencer. Um, you know, one thing I'm I'm big on is visualization and Man, last year you had you you were able to have one of those moments at the state tournament. Hey, team race, team titles on the line, go out and win a state championship, not only for you, but for you and your teammates. Man, what what's that like to be able to go out and do that for your team? Gosh, it was totally it was like a storybook. It was awesome. You know, everything that everybody had done for me to get me to the play the position I was in. You know, all my teammates working their ass off from August to you know, not even not even August, like the summer all the way up to February. And it finally paid off. You know, we've been we hadn't won a state championship since 2009. So that is way too long for Jesuit wrestling to not win a state championship. So going out there and sealing the deal, it's the it's the least I could do for my team. It was, it was hey, look, I, I got to ask you one more, though, when we get to close this one. Did you catch Evan Frost yesterday wrestling for Iowa State? Heck, yeah, I did. That was okay. awesome. Did you see yourself in that position at some point in your college career? Oh, 100%. I, I can't wait. That's that's, that's great, man. Right and look, we can't wait to see you. Thanks for joining us, man. We'll be watching you all year. You make sure you hit a bunch of those lat drops. Okay? <laughs> yes, sir, of course. All right, we'll be back after this commercial break. When you have suffered a personal injury or endured the wrongful death of a loved one, your focus should be on healing. But with medical bills piling up and insurance companies offering less than you expected, you're bound to feel overwhelmed. Since 1994, the Law Office of Stephen J. Rando LLC has used experience to work towards helping his clients obtain the full and fair compensation they deserve so that they can move forward. Contact him for a free consultation. Located at 3530 Canal Street in New Orleans on the historic streetcar line, call 504-486-7122 to schedule an appointment. Recognizing that each patient's goal is unique, plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Henneman offers creative solutions for his patients, utilizing the latest technology and procedures to achieve desired results. When you arrive at our Baton Rouge office for your consultation, you will find impeccable service in a comfortable, relaxed environment. Improving patient appearance, self-image, and confidence are our measures of success and satisfaction, and your privacy and confidentiality are always held in the highest regard. Take your training to a whole new level at Hotworks, the world's first 24-hour infrared fitness studio. 
Get 24-7 access to virtually instructed infrared sauna workouts with 3D training combining heat, infrared energy, and exercise, giving you increased calorie burn, muscle recovery, detoxification, and more. Choose up to 11 different workouts like hot yoga, hot Pilates, and hot cycle. Get more workout in less time. Hot Works, come earn the burn today. We have a special guest joining us tonight from North Louisiana, head North DeSoto coach, Dustin Burton. Coach, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Now, look, it's a pleasure, man. Coach, I remember when I was at Brother Martin back 2013 and 14, right when you were getting your program started, and we would host the junior high state tournament. And, man, all of a sudden, from North Louisiana, these little guys started marching in the gym. And I know this. Um, not only myself, but other coaches in the area, we took notice right away. Um, tell me about the beginnings of the program and, and what you're doing over there at North DeSoto. Well, um, yeah, like you said, around 2013 uh, area, I, I don't remember exact year. I've, I've taken too many double eggs since then, but we, uh, we knew right away that, that feeder program and, and junior high wrestling, or we call it middle school, um, had to get going and had to get strong quick. And, and so that's what we did. So I originally, my first year or two, uh, that's all I focused on. I wasn't with high school. Uh, Coach Gidry and Coach Moeller, um, which are two guys that, you know, really helped get things going here. Um, they ran the high school program and, and uh, you know, it kind of got to where I just said, hey, it's time to, I got kids feeding into that high school room. Now, now I'm ready to, to get going with all of them. Yeah, Coach, look, man, you come from a family. Your grandfather, your dad grew up a little bit in Oklahoma, uh, two-time state place at Aeron High School, Louisiana Classic champion at Rummel. So you're a guy, man, obviously, as you told me today, you love wrestling. It's ingrained in you. What really motivates you when you walk in that North DeSoto room every day? Um, tough kids. Like, I, I still love to wrestle. Uh I, I like to say or I like to think about our kids being tough, uh, not because of of what I tell them or, or, or what I'm teaching them. It, it's it's because I still put my hands on them every day. And, and, and that's just what I love to do. There, there's going to come a time to where my dad says it's going to 10 years ago. My dad said it happened at 35, 36 years old. I'd, I'd start breaking down. My body would start breaking down. But, man, I'm 35 or 36 and, and I'm. I still come in every day, put my shoes on, and and pick a fight with somebody, and and uh, that's it, really. I just love to grind, and, and my kids love to uh, my kids love to grind with me. So, awesome, man. Tell me about how the town has embraced wrestling. Um, you know, we're we're a small country town, a lot of farmers, a lot of farms in the in the area, um, and you know, obviously Louisiana Friday night football is big. Uh, we have a great football program, a great football coach. Baseball programs even successful. Softball, a lot of our sports do a great job. We have really talented coaches and, and athletes. But you know, we we uh, we just really started recruiting heavy. I think one thing that really helps us with our community is that we have an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school all on one big campus, separate buildings, but one big campus. Campus, so that helps a bunch. And and just man. We started seeing success and, and traveling, you know, all over the country or the southeast region side of the country. And, and kids, you know, were developing and, and, and succeeding and, and parents started buying in and, you know, what led from one parent to another. And now it's it's where we are. That's awesome, man. And look, Coach, you know, you and I spoke earlier today. Your schedule, man, you've already been to Dallas for the Heath Tournament. Um, you've got to try me this week with Benton and Parkway. But later on in your schedule, you're going to the Kansas City Stampede, 
This weekend, you'll be in Blanchard, Oklahoma at a tournament. You'll be at the Allen Outlaw Tournament, which I know firsthand. That's a grinder. And you've got some excellent wrestlers. Um, talk about what that experience does when you come back to Louisiana. Well, it's something I learned from, from my dad. You know, you hang out with with big dogs. You're going to be a big dog eventually. Kids adjust. Kids adapt. Which all of you guys know this. I mean, y'all are all extremely successful. Like, kids are going to to adapt to their surroundings. Ray Lewis, show me your crown. I'll, I'll show you your future. Right. So we take our kids to, to, to the big dogs. And, and, um, you know, I've, I've heard, well, we don't know who's in Oklahoma, you know, when it comes to seating meetings and stuff like that. Like, yeah, but his two losses are in Oklahoma. Like if you don't know who's in Oklahoma, you probably shouldn't be at a seating meeting, but, um, that's it. Like we, we just go and, and, and we compete and we're looking to get beat. You know, I'm not saying we can't get beat in Louisiana. We obviously do. But, um, you know, we, we, we're two and a half hours from Dallas. We're, we're two and a half hours from Little Rock. We're, you know, three hours from Oklahoma. Um, why not? If you were in my shoes, I believe y'all would do the same thing. Take advantage of those, that caliber of, of competition and, and, man, go adjust, go adapt, and, and, and try to meet those expectations. No, Coach, you just hit the nail on the head. You said the magic word. You have to go look to get beat. Yep. You know, too many people out there invest too much in being undefeated. I say this, if you're undefeated, you just haven't wrestled the right person. Yep. So I love that outlook. One of your kids who's absolutely had a great offseason was Dalton Compton. Uh, he won the Heath tournament. He finished sixth. He's in uh, a couple of our top tens. Talk about Dalton. Uh, Dalton's a great kid. He, he's he's tough. Like you said, he um, last year, freshman year, um, you know, he, he did really well throughout the season. Um, you know, he was super raw coming in as a high school wrestler, but we knew that he had a, uh, attitude and, a uh, you know, everything it took mentally to, to, to be at the top in Louisiana as a freshman. So that was a goal for him. And, um, you know, like I said, he took some losses early throughout the season, but he did really well. You know, and at the state championships, it kind of paid off, um, you know, the schedule, I feel like, for, for his wrestling. Yeah, look, I'm not going to leave Jacob Kershaw out. He had an outstanding freshman season. So, Coach, you return 11 starters on a team that did very well at the state tournament this year. I asked you earlier today, what's your goal? And you were pretty blunt with me. What's, the, what's North DeSoto's goal this year at the state tournament? Yeah, that's, that's a state or bust, right? So that, that's it every year, you know, and, and, and that's an expectation. It's talked about. It's it's uh, a, a consistent conversation. Um, we don't stray from it. We don't hide from it. It's never happened. You know, the, the worst thing that can happen is second, third. I mean, I tell them uh, uh, not all the time, but I tell them, like, we've taken second, right? And um, it's it's I'm not interested in second. And, <laughs> And there's been times when we've left the state championships and, and my wife for a week says, what's wrong with you? And, and, and I say, do I really got to tell you, you know, and, and, uh, but at the end of the day, like we do whatever wrestler does, we get up and, and we say, all right, let's make adjustments and, and uh, let's keep going and, and, and keep improving. So. Yeah. Coach, well, look, Chad, Chad working with USA Wrestling and you guys being big contributors to the kids tournament. I'm going to kick it over to Chad for a minute. Maybe get ask you a couple of questions about your kids club. Yeah. So Deeper, how many kids do you have out there? Deeper. <laughs> Man, oh, we, got like, we got like uh, from elementary to high school based off roster. We're at 168 kids. Wow. Wow. In a, uh... And when, it, when we met at the USA Wrestling board meeting, you had mentioned that uh, a new facility, you guys were constructing a new facility. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, our school board, um, you know, was looking at doing a, a bond, uh, which recently was voted on, um, and it did not pass. It was a $130 million bond, um, and inside the bond, or with the bond money, uh, we were going to receive a new wrestling facility. And, uh, you know, the images and and the things that the superintendent and I sat down and, and talked about, uh, I'm telling you, it, yeah, I'm sure you guys would trust me. Uh, it was going to be one of the nicest wrestling facilities in the country. 
Uh, the bond did not pass. Um, I have gotten word that we are, are, are going to make some adjustments and, um, you know, some different routes for the scenario, but uh, we will still be getting a wrestling facility. Um, so that made me feel a lot better the night of, uh, you know, the results that we got. So, yeah, I mean, that kind of going back to the community thing, like our school board, our superintendents, our coaches, our, our, our fans, our community, they understand, they love it. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's going to happen. And, and we're going to, um, you know, have that facility that, that we've been talking about. Well, uh, well, DePaul, DePaul and I know a couple of things about uh, readjusting and going back to the same people and getting what you want done. So uh, best of luck with, best of luck <laughs> with that, these Coach. Guys, hopefully, Coach, these guys will help you get something done. Look, Coach, it's always a pleasure to watch your teams wrestle. As you said earlier, these country kids up there. But, hey, we know that comes with – probably a lot of hard work before and after school and raised where they're, they've got chores to do. And it shows on the map. Your kids are tough. They're well coached. And, man, it's just a pleasure having you on. And we can't wait. Looking forward to seeing you guys at the Louisiana Classic this year. Yeah, thank you. So we had a bunch of teams head down to Mobile, Alabama couple last weekend for the Gulf Coast Clash. Man, Louisiana was very impressive in the tournament. Chad, why don't you fill us in on a little bit of Louisiana action? Well, we went uh, 8 of 14. The quick little math, 57% of champions in Alabama were from Louisiana. Uh, Liam Ritchie won at 106. We had Graffinini, 113, Brother Martin. Uh, Rosas, Turlings Catholic. Roach, Sam Houston. Clemente, Brother Martin. Brant Babineau from Turlings Catholic. Uh, Jackson Calderaro, Jesuit, and Spent, Big Spence. Uh, from Jesuit at 285. Uh, so big dominant performance uh, for us as a state going across. Um, and then also we had uh, Alsonson, Aurelian in the quarters where Aurelian came through. He ended up dropping, uh, losing the match in the finals, but had a tough showing, a tough tournament. And then we had a Gabe Cuba from Ben's school, Catholic High, uh, making the semi. So all around great turnout uh, for Louisiana. And just how far do you want to go, Robbie? Yeah, look, man, I, five of our top ten um, won titles there. Um, man, I think a guy that might be knocking on the door of our top ten that we didn't mention today, Brant Babineau from Turlings Catholic, who had, I think, a great freshman season last year, right? Yep. And as a, just a sophomore, yeah. his dad was a three-time state champ. Um, he's tough. He's tough, and, and he won his weight class pretty easy. You know, I think Spencer was the MOW of the tournament. Uh, the team race now. You know, Jesuit finished in first place with 224 points. Brother Martin was right there with 210 points. I know both teams this year have had um, a fair amount of dual meets. Jesuit had a big win over St. Paul's. Um, so I think, you know, it, it gives the coaches of Brother Martin and Jesuit and some of the other schools, it gives them an idea of what kind of points teams are going to put up at these when we come in state and we battle it out at the in-state tournaments. Ben, any thoughts on the Gulf Coast Clash? Yeah, I mean, I think in addition to the guys that won it, I mean, you had six runner-ups, right? So, you you know, eight eight champs and six runner-ups, and some of those were matchups, right? I mean, we talked about Tyson and Bodie's uh, match a little bit. Richie beat Caleb Levine from Sam Houston, who I've got right in my next 10, after, right outside of the top 10. Um, and so – you know, it just shows you kind of the trajectory of Louisiana wrestling to just go into that state, to go into that tournament, and really, really flood the finals. Um, so I just think it's going to be an interesting year this year. I mean, Jesuit's obviously the favorite, right, coming from last year. But I just feel like you've got three or four other teams that are so deep right behind them. And that makes the state tournament a lot of fun because when you get a lot of deep teams – you don't get one team just blowing out uh, point records, right? And so it, it just kind of makes everything tighter and tighter and tighter until you get to Saturday night. It really comes down to who can win finals matches to win the state title. Yeah, so that brings us to the November tournaments. You know, let's talk about some of these early season tournaments. And, look, I'm going to give my perspective from a coaching standpoint. Um, in November, I was kind of holding things down, waiting for my couple few football players that would be coming out. And, but but always wanting to win tournaments. You know, that was just the way I approached things. 
Okay, I, I, I didn't want to go in half loaded. I wanted to go in with all my guys. Now, I was lucky to have a lot of second and third team guys that could fill in in the upper weights. So I could go to a tournament like Brother Martin did this year, go to a tournament like the Cinco Ranch, get some valuable experience, and then come back to Louisiana and wrestle and wait for my football players to come out. The other thing as a wrestler in November, I really want to get used to my weight classes. And I think a lot of these kids, as Chad said earlier in the broadcast, a lot of kids are getting used to their weight classes now. And hopefully by Thanksgiving, it's not a big yo-yo anymore, but it's a nice and easy cut. But there have been some good tournaments so far this year. Let's talk, Chad, um, or Ben, let's talk a little bit about the Warrior Open. Yeah, I mean, the Warrior Open is, it has been for years. It's been a really good start to the season. It's the opening weekend. And you'll get airline coming down from Shreveport. Obviously, a lot of the Baton Rouge schools are there. Holy Cross came. And there's a lot of guys that, that, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that names you know. And there's names maybe you don't know. Um, that, that come in, and it's a lot of guys that might not be a starter at the end of the year. You can see what they can do. Uh, but the tournament went really well. Um, I, you know, there's, there's we talked about this in the, in the prep show. You know, I think some of the surprises this year is the Crass kid, the junior out of East Ascension. I mean, he's beaten two state champs. He's undefeated. He's 12 and 0 right now. He got he won the Warrior Open and, and looked really, really good doing that. We talked about it, you know, in the prep show that 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 just adds that East Ascension depth this year, which has been. Pretty impressive uh, since the beginning of the season. And then you roll that into the East Ascension, the Spartan Invitational. EA won it, but Dutchtown was right on their heels. Dutchtown's got some guys. And, you know, that Ascension Titan Wrestling Club, which is one of the best youth clubs in the state, has really started to pay dividends for Dutchtown. Um, you got three or four guys in that lineup that have been wrestling since they were little kids. And, and what you're seeing is not only are they making the finals, but they're starting to pull the other guys on their team up. You know, I talked to Cole Gross, who's kind of one of their studs, uh, last year, and he just said, man, the wrestling room is different now. It's just more competitive. Practices are harder. And so what you see is you get some guys at the top that kind of know what they're doing, and all of a sudden all those younger guys start to kind of rise with them. So it'll be a lot of fun in Baton Rouge this year, looking to see what's going to happen here in December. Yeah, you know, one guy that really stood out to me in the early season is a guy we talked about on our first show is Osiris Gray of Acadiana. Um, he actually took Roach to sudden victory at the Warrior Open. Now, um, Tyson came back and put some distance between the two of them in the next two to three matches. But I think he's a guy, especially with Roach being a Division II wrestler, man, Gray's that guy right outside the top 10 who's going to be a real force at 126. Um, I like the fact that in these tournaments also, we've had different team champions. Uh, Holy Cross won the Griffin Open. Fountain Blue won there, Bulldog um, Brawl. Uh, and then East Ascension edged out Dutchtown by a point and a half at the East Ascension tournament. And that looked like a pretty competitive tournament also, Ben. Yeah, I mean, just like I said, you know, EA's got tremendous depth. So it was a little surprising to me to see Dutchtown stay that close with them. Now, to be fair, EA's got a lot of hammers that are out right now with injury. Um, and so they were wrestling some young guys. But, I mean, like I said, it's just the quality of wrestling across the board, especially in Baton Rouge, has gotten better. Um, there's deeper teams. I mean, another team that, that, that's going to make some noise this year in Baton Rouge that really hadn't seen them yet is Baton Rouge High. They've got a ton of kids. Uh, they've done a really good job developing that program, and they're going to be deep. And, and, Coach, you and I always talk about this, right? When you get to February, right, the key to winning the Louisiana State title as a team is depth. It's having 14 guys that are going to score points, right, in three or four rounds of the state tournament, right? So you got two or three studs, that's great, but you need 14 guys scoring. And so at least what we're seeing in Baton Rouge is teams moving in that direction where they're putting 10, 11, 12 quality wrestlers into a tournament and you see them really like close the distance with the historical elite teams. Yeah, you know, Ben, I think I think that's a great point. And, you know, I'm just looking at the different schools represented. Shaw had a champ at the East Ascension Tournament. I had a long talk with uh, their coach the other day. He's waiting on kids to come out for football, and they advanced to the state semifinals. A lot of our wrestling schools are also participating in the football playoffs still. And, man, if you check the calendar, it's 66 days to state because states moved up so early this year. So, man, you're thinking a lot of these kids now, as soon as they get out of football, they're going to have to get out there and get in shape as quick as possible because you want them to get those matches in before we head into January. And then before you know it, man, three weeks after the Classic, 
we're heading to the state tournament. So look, on our next show next week, we're going to talk a lot more dual meets, tournaments, and wrestling. We're going to take one more commercial break, and then we're going to come back with a little college recap and a way that you can email us with your questions so that we can be as helpful as possible moving forward. We'll be back right after this break. When you have suffered a personal injury or endured the wrongful death of a loved one, your focus should be on healing. But with medical bills piling up and insurance companies offering less than you expected, you're bound to feel overwhelmed. Since 1994, the Law Office of Stephen J. Rando, LLC, has used experience to work towards helping his clients obtain the full and fair compensation they deserve so that they can move forward. Contact him for a free consultation. Located at 3530 Canal Street in New Orleans on the historic streetcar line, call 504-486-7122 to schedule an appointment. Recognizing that each patient's goal is unique, plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Henneman offers creative solutions for his patients, utilizing the latest technology and procedures to achieve desired results. When you arrive at our Baton Rouge office for your consultation, you will find impeccable service in a comfortable, relaxed environment. Improving patient appearance, self-image, and confidence are our measures of success and satisfaction, and your privacy and confidentiality are always held in the highest regard. Take your training to a whole new level at Hotworks, the world's first 24-hour infrared fitness studio. Get 24-7 access to virtually instructed infrared sauna workouts with 3D training combining heat, infrared energy, and exercise, giving you increased calorie burn, muscle recovery, detoxification, and more. Choose up to 11 different workouts like hot yoga, hot Pilates, and hot cycle. Get more workout in less time. Hotworks, come earn the burn today. All right, guys, welcome back to Louisiana Wrestling Now. Man, you know, we got to unleash the top 10 tonight. We got to talk wrestling. You know, the three of us love this sport. Um, man, and I, I know we all agree on this. Um, I think our wrestlers, even more so today, they need to be exposed, as we've talked about, to national tournaments, regional tournaments, and, man, college wrestling. And it doesn't just have to be Division One. You know, there's a there's a thing I see all the time on social media. Three percent of athletes play at the next level, and that's junior college, NAIA, Division three, II, Division two, II, and Division one. I. I don't care where you wrestle, if you can extend your career and get college paid for, or get to continue to compete, man, that's the number one thing. Because once you hang up those shoes. Man, it's just you can go you can go to a practice as an alumni, but it's not the same thing. So, man, I think we were all fired up. So yesterday, Iowa and Iowa State, the first dual meet ever broadcast live on ESPN, a sold out Hilton Arena at Iowa State. They've never beaten Tom Brands, never beaten the Brands brothers in a dual meet. And last night. Man, what a great duel. Iowa squeaks it out. But I mean, I think for all of us, it was the performance of former Holy Cross alumni Evan Frost, who was a three-time state champion in Louisiana, a one-time state champ in Iowa. Man, his performance was incredible. Chad, talk about it. You know, him going in and for that turn was absolutely beautiful. You know, he's wrestling at home. He's wrestling an absolute hammer out of Iowa. Uh, in the Iowa singlet and him going for that turn and not only going for it, but executing it perfectly uh, was just phenomenal. I mean, it, it was a great testament as to who he is as a young man, as a competitor, uh, as an athlete and uh, hoping to see more, hoping to see more Louisiana boys uh, under the big lights on, uh, on ESPN. Yeah, man, look, hey, let's not forget Jacob Frost either because – he was the starter at 141. I think Iowa State had a little lineup change. They bumped their 149 
down to 141. And hey, let's give him credit. He took the defending national finalists to sudden victory. But Jacob Frost is right there also. And man, Evan and Jacob couldn't be proud of those guys. Ben, what's it mean to Louisiana wrestling to see a kid from Louisiana on ESPN doing what we did last night? Man, I just think it tells all the kids in the state that it's possible. You know, we talked, Rob, you and I talked about this. I mean, when I was coming up in the 90s, you know, I got to watch Daniel Cormier wrestle in college. You know, so it'd be when ESPN showed the national tournament, I was sitting there in my living room watching Cormier know that he was coming from Northside. And so, you know, it's the same thing that now these guys get to watch the Frost brothers and, and plenty of other kids that now that in Louisiana that we put in college and say, look, that's that's a reality, right? You can do this. Now, it takes a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of talent, but it's not impossible. And uh, I just think it's just an awesome thing. It was an awesome thing for Evan. It was an awesome thing for the state of Louisiana. And it was just, I mean, it was a lot of fun for all of us that, that, you know, when they came in as eighth graders, I remember looking at those guys being like, what is going on with these two? These 13 year olds are killing everybody. So it's fun to kind of watch that that growth and that trajectory and, and get to continue to watch it for hopefully another four or five years. Yeah, look, Chad brought up a great point at the Emanuel Open last week. Chad, how many Louisiana kids did we have entered? We had six guys, six guys. We had Rocco Horvath, Louisiana state champ out of Brother Martin, uh, Dimitri Tedley from uh, state champ out of C.E. Bird. Uh, everyone knows Brad and Trent Mahoney, the two Bash brothers. Uh, state champs out of East Ascension, Brad being a one-time, Trent being a three-time as well as one-time All-American. Uh, Jensen Bergeron was a finalist out of Lafayette, and then uh, Mark Pennison out of uh, Hannon, a state champ. And really, it, it's about going to the next level, getting your education paid for. Any kid that wants to go to the next level, we could certainly do everything in our power to help facilitate that, uh, no matter what no matter which direction it is, NAI Division One, Division Two, uh, and then we're also working on some things that uh, to maybe potentially grow the state here in Louisiana. Um, so that's kind of always my goal is to always grow the sport. Uh, but and, and I wanted to ask Ben and Robbie as well. Uh, I was talking about it with Leon and Twin and some of the other guys uh, last week. I feel like we have the most kids wrestling in college today than we ever have. I mean, maybe the 90s, you know, well, I don't know. we had I mean, that, that Colby thing, run. Yeah, first thing when I hear you saying that you were talking to Leon and Twin is, oh, uh -oh we might not want to talk about this on the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I thought, Chad. But since you <laughs> since you clarified that for me, um, you know, I think you might be right. Um, we, we've got a whole bunch of kids out there competing. You know, I think we had a lot of one and dones in the past. They go do it for a year. They get that urge to come back home. Uh, it's great to see kids hanging with it. And look, we're going to continue to follow these kids. And if you want to continue to follow us from here on out, our dual meets and tournaments are going to require a subscription. All, all our studio shows like the one today are going to be free. We're going to ask you to submit questions to Louisiana wrestling now at gmail.com. But we're going to really ask you to support Eric Ritchie, Ron, Ron LZ, Justin, our, our producer today. And man, subscribe to Louisiana wrestling now. I sat on my couch the other night and I watched three LHSAA playoff football games from beginning to end. You know, it, it's great coverage all over the state. It's $11.99 a month or $100 for the year. Subscribe to Louisiana Wrestling Now. Catch the best in Louisiana wrestling. And please continue to join us. We'll see everyone back next Monday.